Welcome to lab two. This time we've divided the lab into two sections. A conceptual section, we're going to use R to demonstrate some properties of the mean in this section. And then there's two practical sections where we'll look at importing data, calculating means, and graphing them with ggplot2. This video will be for the concept section, and I'll make a companion video for the practical section. I also want to note that at this point in learning R, there's so many details that we're going to gloss over. So uh, for the most part, in the concept section, I will attempt to go into uh, details and explain why I'm doing the things I'm doing uh, in R as we use R to demonstrate some properties of the mean. And then in the practical sections this time, I'm just going to give you some example code that accomplishes our goals of importing data, calculating means, and graphing them. In later labs, we'll go into greater detail about the, the, uh, how R is doing these things behind the scenes. Before we get started, I want to do a quick demo. Uh, when you're doing data analysis, a lot of times you'll be loading in some data calculating things like means or other descriptive statistics, and then you want to look at them, you'll make a graph. So I've made a little means demo here for you. And to run this demo, you want to, first of all, install the tidyverse. We're going to be using lots of, this is a, the tidyverse is a large collection of different packages in R and that help us do data analysis. So first of all, install tidyverse, and that will um, load up a bunch of packages. And here's the simple example. All of these lines of code, uh, first of all, they load some libraries from the tidyverse that we'll be using. Uh, what we do is, first of all, uh, use some data that's already from, uh, that's already included in R. This one's called chickwts, chick weights. If I was to go into R and type that in there, what we'll see is a data frame and it has the weights of little chicks as a function of what kinds of things they ate. All right, I'll just flip back into R here. Uh, and we're looking at the very same thing, the lab two. Uh, however, we're looking at the R Markdown document that I created. So I can just sh uh, run through the demonstrations this way. So here's a line of code where we take this data frame chick weights, we group it by the different kinds of food the chicks eight, and then we summarize it so that we get the means for each of the different kinds of feed. And the first thing that we do is we put that into a variable. And when we do that, we get some, oh, I'm just going to clear the workspace real quick. So it's easier to follow along. Clear. Yes. I'm going to run this line of code again. And we see a data frame here. If we were to look at it by typing it in, we'll see that it now has means, mean weights for each of the different feeds. And it's stored in this variable called means underscore df, which is a little table. If I run this little piece of code, I will print out a table into my output. So here, that's the table, table of means. And here's a quick line that will produce a plot of different means. So there's a brief demo showing finding some means from a data frame, making a table, and plotting them using ggplot2. You'll learn more about uh, creating means and plotting them in the next practical sections following our concept section. So now we're going into the first concept section. Let's do that. Um, what we want to do here, the goal is, I'll just flip back to the website. I've got a question laid out here. This is, let's demonstrate a property of the arithmetic mean. Okay, we talked about this in class, that the mean, uh, let's find it down here. The mean is the point from which the sum of the deviations from the mean that is the deviations between the mean and the scores is zero. So the point of our concepts one section is to use R to demonstrate this property of the mean. We're going to do that in a bunch of different ways. 
Okay, but first of all, uh, let's, I guess I missed this part here, the base descriptive statistics functions. All right, so in R, whenever you have some numbers, say in a vector, and here I put the numbers one to 10 in a, in a vector, we can calculate the mean using the mean function, we can calculate the median, we can calculate the standard deviation, we can calculate the variance. These are uh, common descriptive statistics, and these are some examples of calculating those in R. R doesn't have a base functions for every descriptive statistic, and uh, it's easy to write your own functions for ones that it's missing. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, when we get to the generalization problems. But for now, we'll uh, just use this, these examples to show that it's pretty easy to calculate some common things in R. So let's get on to concepts one. The point here is to look closer at the mean in R and then uh, use R to demonstrate this unique property of the mean, that it minimizes the sum of the deviations. So as we step through the concepts, uh, we're going to look closely at the mean function we're going to write our own mean function, then we're going to conduct a simulation to demonstrate that the mean is the only number that causes the sum of the deviations from the mean to equal zero. Here are some examples of using the mean function. Here we calculate the mean of the numbers one to 10. Here we calculate the mean of these numbers one, two, three store, that are combined in this vector. We mentioned previously that Chick WTS is a data frame with some data in it. Notice that it has two columns. One is titled weight, one is titled feed. If we use this notation with a dollar sign, I'm just gonna type chick, whoops, I wanted to type that into the console. Chick WTS dollar sign. Now we can see and select the different columns in the data frame, so let's type weight. That gives us all the different weights. So of course we could put that in the mean function and calculate the mean that way. And that is the mean of all of the weights of those chicks in that data frame. All right, uh, in Voking Allen, there is the discussion of lots of different kinds of means in chapter two. We're gonna look only at the arithmetic mean today. And I'll scroll down if you want to see the formula for the mean, here it is. The mean is equal to the sum of the scores, xi, uh, divided by the number of scores. So it's the, the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. That is the, the uh, formula for the mean. And if we wanted to break those steps down and sort of do all those things individually in R, we could first create a vector of numbers like one to 10 here. Those are in A. We could then find the sum of those values and store that in a variable. We could then find the length, which is the number of scores, and we could store that in a variable. And then we could find the mean by taking the sum and dividing by the length, even storing that in a variable. And of course, we could then uh, look inside that variable and see we've computed the mean. Uh, this is a long way to do this. We could write our own function that does these steps and, and that would look a little bit like this. Here's an example. If I load this, then I get a function called my mean and I can put numbers into it and calculate the mean. All I've done here is we're uh, going to input numbers into the x variable and we're going to first sum save the result find the length save the result and then divide the sum by the length to find the mean and then we're returning the mean there is uh, numerous ways you could write this function and here are some examples that make this a little bit shorter so first of all um, it is not necessary to write the return statement. Look up here, there's a return in here and we're telling the function to return the value inside mean underscore X. If you just 
put the, uh, the name of a variable at the end of a function, and there's only one there, it will output that, and you don't need the return to do it. Similarly, in this example, um, we first calculate the sum, then the length, and then we simply write sum, uh, the, the variable for the sum divided by the variable for the length, and it will return that, which we know that is the, also the mean. We Here's a, another way to do it. Um, we don't even have to separately store the sum in a variable or the length in a variable. We could just calculate the sum and divide it by the length and have that be returned. Finally, uh, because this is a very simple uh, formula, we could just put all of this on one line, just like this. So there's an example of a one-liner. And when you put something on one line, you don't need the curly braces as a part of the syntax for your function. Okay, let's move on. So the main point of our concepts one section is to use R to demonstrate that the mean is the point from which the sum of the deviations is zero. So let's do this. First of all, uh, we, we need some numbers. I've arbitrarily created some numbers here. Uh, these, are, uh, these could be scores from some data. And they're 164, 5434, 5678, and 3. I'm pressing play, and I've stored those numbers. Here they are. Now, our first question is to think about calculating deviations from the numbers. So for example, if we were to say, how far away are these numbers from some other number? We can do that in R. And I've got an example here. We could ask, how different are all of these individual numbers from number five? So if we just take the values in scores and subtract five, then uh, we see that 1 minus 5 equals minus 4, and 64 minus 5 equals 59, and 5 minus 5 equals 0, and so on. Uh, these are the original scores right here. This is our number that we're um, finding a difference from, and these are the deviations from that number. And uh, there's more of them as we go down. And we can see those printed out right here. So for any number we would care to choose, in this case a 5, we can compute the deviations between that number and the scores. And of course, we can add them up. So here, we've added them up. I've added about all these numbers. And uh, we got a 55. OK, so the sum of the deviations between our scores and 5 is a 55. Now what we're trying to demonstrate is that the mean is a point, it's a number here, it's not 5, it's the number that causes the sum of the deviations to be 0. So first of all, let's see if we can use R to demonstrate that that's true. And I'm going to do that right here. I'll just move this down and we can see that. First of all, here's our scores. So our scores, we can look at it a couple ways. Our scores are right here. Here is the mean of the scores. This, that value is 10. So if it, instead of a 10, or instead of a 5, we put a 10 here, which is the mean. We could recalculate all these things. And we could do that very quickly in R by saying scores minus the mean of the scores. And we get all of these different deviations here. So 1 minus 10 right, is minus 9, uh, 64 minus 10 is 54, 5 minus 10 is minus 5, and so on. Okay, so these values are the deviations of the scores from the mean. And the property of the mean that we're exploring is the fact that if you add up the sum of the deviations of the scores from the mean, you get zero. We can do that right here. Let's add them up, and we get zero. So there we've done it. We've used R to demonstrate that when you sum the 
deviations of the scores from the mean of the scores, you get zero. Now, we're going to continue here to demonstrate this in R in a slightly different way. And uh, my whiteboard is getting messy. Let me do a pause. Okay, we're going to conduct some simulations now to approximate the mean. Effectively, what we're going to do, and we've already seen this as an example, because before we found that the scores minus a five produce a set of deviations that added up to 55, not zero. But when we took the scores and subtracted the mean, we found a set of deviations that added up to zero, right? And um, this implies that if we tested numbers that were smaller than the mean or tested numbers that were larger than the mean, we would find deviations that didn't add up to zero. And as we get closer and closer to the mean, our deviations will get closer and closer to a sum of zero. So I want to do a whole bunch of tests. I want to test numbers from the smallest number to the largest number in our set of numbers. And uh, remember, here's our numbers, 1, 64, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 3. So our smallest number is a 1, and our largest number is a 64. I want to do something like this. I want to find the sum of the deviations between the scores and the smallest number, 1. So let's do that. We got a 99. So that is the sum of all the scores minus 1. All of these deviations add up to 99. And that's pretty far away from the mean of 10. When we look at uh, the next number, number 2, we can get those deviations and add them up, and so on. We can keep doing this. Here's all the sums. Notice the sums are getting smaller, 99, 88, 77, 66, 55, 44. They're getting smaller and smaller as we approach the mean, which is 10. Now, we've got a bunch more to do. 1 to 64, and I don't want to write all of this out by hand. So we're going to use a loop in R in order to do all of the sums from 1 to 64. Here's how we're going to set it up. Now this whole piece of code will automate everything for us. First of all, we can find the first value, it's the smallest value in our set, using min. So it's 1. We can use the max function to find the largest value. And I'm going to test uh, all of the values between 1 to 64. So I want to create a sequence, just like this, of the values 1 to 64. And I'm saving that in a variable called numbers to test. OK. So I'm going to test the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 64. And each time, I'm going to calculate the sum of the deviations between my scores and this particular value. So every time, I want to save a sum, because I'm going to get one every single time I do this. So I want to have a new vector, and it's going to uh, can contain my saved values. So I'm, I'm calling that sum underscore deviations. And when I do this, I create a null vector, but it's ready to be loaded in with new things. So now in my loop, I'm going to go for i in the, the, the elements inside this vector. And remember, those are the values, I'm just going to copy this. Those are the values 1 to 64. So I will become these values. And let's look inside our loop for a second. Here what we're going to do is we're going to save into the first position, position i, um, of some deviations, the value of the sum of the scores minus i. So in position one, we're going to basically save the sum of the deviations from the scores minus one. And then in the next step of the loop, 
it'll in position two we'll save the sum of the scores minus two and then we'll save this uh, and in position three the sum of the scores minus three and so on okay if we run all of this press play and i've run everything um, we see we we're printing out uh, let's look over here printing out one for the min 64 for the max we we then run the loop and we're printing out down here the sum of the deviations at each step of the way so we've actually answered the question the sum of the deviations for, of the scores and one is 99 then 88 then 77 then 66 and 55 and so on and um, you know at some point you can see that there is a zero and this actually happens to be the mean and what position is that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so in position 10 um, that is our value of i a 10 that makes the mean equal to zero so we've computed our first simulation now it can be useful to plot these results potentially to look at them in a clearer way we could use the plot function and we're going to plot the sum of our deviations and we just get this uh, straight line going down so the first value is going to be a 99 then an 88 and then a 77 then a 66 we're basically going down by 10 every single time if we wanted to figure out our answer that is the point here from 0 to 64 that causes the sum of the deviations to equal 0 is right around here. It's a 10. You can have to draw up and see it. This isn't super clear. It's not easy to kind of see that. Um, so we could make it easier to see. If we plotted the sum of if, if we plotted these numbers as absolute values, so for example, when we look at the numbers, all of the values that are smaller than the mean, that is uh, 1 to 9, produce sums that are positive, and then all of the values that are larger than the mean, that is 11 to 64, produce sums that are negative, right? If we turned all of these values into positive values use looking taking the absolute value we can do that using abs for absolute value if we do that we convert all the numbers to positive so if we then plot the result we see kind of like a check mark and it shows us that the smallest sum of the deviations for their absolute value the one that is zero is a 10. So it's an easy way to see this result here. Oftentimes when you produce a simulation in R, you'll, you'll want to inspect your results for particular properties. So for example, we have created the variable sum deviations and it stores all of the deviations of the scores from um, uh, the sums of them from one to 64. Now we can clearly see just by looking that the zero is right here and we counted earlier that's in position 10. However, um, let's say we had a lot of numbers to look through and we wanted to find out what position the zero was in and have R do that work for us. Well, we could use the which function. And in this function, we can find the position uh, or positions in a vector that equal some logical comparison. So in this case, we are asking the question effectively, which of the elements in the vector sum deviations equal the value zero? So uh, let me, yes, uh, so that is what, what we're asking, I think. And let's see what happens when we do this. Notice we've got two equal signs here, and that is for a logical test. We're basically going to compare each of the values in the vector, and we're going to figure out which ones equal zero. Let's just take this one and put it in here. So we're not using the which function, but let's just see what happens for this logical comparison. 
And what we see is a whole bunch of falses and one true. So this is like saying we've now compared every single value to the value of zero, and we've shown that none of these are zero, so they all get false. This one is zero, so it's true. And all the other values are false. Okay. Now, an, another way of stating the question is, we can see one true showed up. So the question is, which position in the vector uh, contains this value true? Uh, we know the answer is 10. That's the 10th position. And if we put this uh, formula into the which function, it's going to return the position information. So this should return the value 10. And that refers to the tenth position of the vector. Um, if we did something like this, we could be saying, oh, let's take a look inside the vector sum deviations and see what is in position 10. And we should see there's a zero there. And here, uh, we've put all these things together. We've asked the question, uh, show me the value um, in some deviations where uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this, um, sorry, this, this is equivalent to the top part here. Rather than knowing it's a 10, we're just using this part to calculate the, the position information for. So this would also return a zero because the inside part is returning a 10. All right, we have some minor details to take care of. Uh, in our previous example, it was convenient that one of the numbers we were testing was actually the mean value. It was a 10. And that caused the sum of the deviations to go to zero. What if we had some numbers where uh, the numbers we were testing, none of them were actually the mean. So for example, here our scores are the values 1 to 20. And if we wanted to do a similar kind of test and search through the values 1 to 20 um, to find the mean. So I haven't calculated the mean yet. And I happen to know, let's just, just do this. Um, so we've calculated our sum of deviations from 1 to 20 for these scores. And if we look at them here, uh, we can see they get smaller, but around here, they never go to zero. They start getting smaller again. They start going negative, rather. So it seems the mean value is, in, is not an integer. It lies between these positions somewhere. So if we're trying to find this value, like we did last time, uh, last time this, the, um, this which function asking which of the values in our sum deviations equal zero, this will, won't work because none of the values are actually zero. If we're looking for um, numbers that are the closest to the mean, that is numbers that approximate the mean given the values that we're testing, because we're only testing the values one to 20, we'll have to do something slightly different. For example, a which function could say which of the values are closest to zero. And uh, the way I've written that here, as I've said, well, let's take the absolute value of the sum of the deviations. And if we do that, we're going to be looking at these values. We're taking uh, all positive values. And we're, what we're trying to find in here is the values that are the smallest, the minimum values. So we could be looking for uh, the min absolute uh, values of this of the sum of the deviations just like this um, so we've done that step and we get a 10 so now if we put all of this 
inside the which function, we're going to be figuring out which of the positions, and that is positions 10 and 11, uh, have the smallest values, that is the values that are closest to zero. So in this simulation, we've determined that um, out of the numbers we tested, the, the values 10 and 11 are the closest to the mean closest to the mean of the scores 1 to 20. So what is the mean of the scores 1 to 20? It's 10.5. It's right between our two approximate values 10 and 11. Finally, I want to show a um, slightly more advanced example. We're going to continue to use R to demonstrate that the mean minimizes the, or set, it is the value that causes the sum of the deviations to be zero. We're still, uh, we're, we're still exploring the problem of approximating the mean by testing out different values. And we've done that twice already. In the previous examples, we only ever tested values that were integer values, like between the smallest number and the largest number in integer steps. Uh, but of course, we might want to test uh, decimal values or any set of values in between. And um, what I've done here is I've written this in a functional form. So I'm, first I'm just going to show you that if we load this function, um, we now should see it. Uh, oops, did that wrong? We should see it here. And in in this function, we input a set of scores. So I've created a set of scores here, A, and we're going to input a test sequence. And this time I've made one go from zero to 10 in steps of 0.1. What I would like to do is test all of these values from zero to 10 and see which one um, gets closest to the mean. That is which one produces the smallest, closest to zero sum of deviations. So when I run the function by putting the uh, scores into the first part and the test sequence into the second part of the function, we get an answer of 5.4. So it's telling me that the value 5.4 among our test values was the closest to the actual mean. So here's the actual mean, and it's 5.38, pretty close. So that is the end of the concepts section. I uh, will uh, end here, and I will just note that in creating this approximate mean function, I combined some of the earlier examples. So this is our example for creating a loop to save all of the sums of all the, the deviations in a test sequence. And uh, this was that part that we discussed in the previous minor detail section to find the value that produces the smallest sum of the deviations that are closest to zero. And then in here, we're just returning that, that position, which is the test value that is approximating the mean. All right, uh, um, after this video, I will make another one and post it on the Lab 2 website page going over the practical examples where we will uh, look at inputting real data and calculating descriptive statistics with the tidyverse, just a quick example. And then we'll look at plotting our means with ggplot2. And so see you then.